uh, head coach Shane Richardson, National Signing Day 2020. Uh, coach, uh, have uh, what looks to make uh, uh, an outstanding class. Um, last year, biggest signing class in school history. This year, probably one of, one of the smallest, if not the smallest. Uh, but you seem to got some uh, pretty capable recruits in this class. Definitely. Uh, we feel very good about this class. I think uh, there was an extremely amount of hard work that went into this. And this year, probably more than in a couple years past, we felt like uh, we were a little bit more specialized in who we targeted. And I think that even made it a little bit more difficult to try to actually finalize those guys and so to be able to get these 12 that we have very excited about them uh, we were trying to kind of come up with a well-rounded class uh, to hit every position uh, with the exception of a couple and uh, we really feel like we did that not a whole lot of seniors on last year's team so what was your focus going in uh, you said you, you could be more specialized with this class and last year's class was pretty much uh, clusters here and clusters there mm -hmm. and more specialized with this class what were the holes that you were really looking to fill uh, with this class yeah i think what it is is uh you're right we're still uh, we've got a lot of investment that's made uh, at the nucleus part of our team, and, and it's not even come to the maturity standpoint yet where we're losing a lot of seniors each year. And so uh, we've got a lot of good pieces that are coming back. And so what we want to do is just try to create some depth for ourselves. Uh, we talked about each position in terms of just making sure that we're filling out the classes in a balanced way. So there were a couple positions that are pretty thick right now in terms of our current roster. Uh, we did not take a running back this year. We've got a lot of tailbacks on the roster right now that we feel really good about. Uh, and, you know, I think it comes back to uh, you're always looking for offensive linemen and defensive linemen. I think those are the ones that are probably the most difficult to get in the program, keep in the program, and obviously keep healthy once you start to really – practice uh, and go through a, a year to year basis. And so, you know, we're trying to make sure that we're staying uh, with a lot of those bodies as well. And I think, you know, when you look at special teams, uh, that also plays a factor in terms of some of the positions that we recruit. Now let's go back to going back to last year's class a little bit uh, out of that, that the, the, the largest signing class in school history. How many of those kids were you able to redshirt and were you able to redshirt all those who you wanted? And, and how game ready are those kids now as we head into the spring? Yeah, so last year we were able to play three true freshmen that came in. And uh, I would say there were about three other guys that were right on the bubble where we had to make a choice going into that first game as to what we wanted to do with them. And so very capable guys from last year's class. They're really excited to go into spring ball now to really be able to compete for a job uh, obviously the red shirt tag is off them and they're they're right in the mix with everybody else and so uh, we're really looking forward to just all the rest of these spring workouts and then going into spring ball to see what those guys can do and uh, you know I think it, every time we're on the road and every time we talk to a particular prospect and recruit we tell them uh, the best players are going to play and some guys will be more ready than others, and uh, sometimes their film might not be the best indication. Some freshmen will come in and surprise you and be more ready than what you really think they are, and then other guys that you think are, were ahead of the game, uh, they might not be as ready. And so uh, you just kind of have to wait and to, you know, to see what happens during fall camp to see how that shakes out. Let's, uh, let's dive into it a little bit. Uh, you got a local flair in this class, which you always love to sign a local kid. Mm -hmm. so. I'm going to lead in. We'll, we'll start with the defensive lineman, so you, so you can sort of hit on. on a local product. Yeah, Austin Chavis, uh, just uh, couldn't be more thrilled to get him in the program, was definitely uh, one of the better players in the area here, right close to home, and uh, the thing I like about Austin is uh, obviously the things off the field that, that are very attractive in terms of his character, and uh, a very good student, and just a great personality, is going to be a great fit for us. But I think also on the field, he's very uh, multiple and can play a variety of positions. Uh, we're going to start him on the D-line and then just kind of see how that looks. But I think uh, he has the capability to help us in some different areas. And uh, we'll obviously just see what the, the transition looks like there with him. And uh, Daryl Malachi, uh, I'll say another kid with good size. Yeah, Daryl Malachi, uh, very explosive off the line and uh, will be a guy that um, will he'll develop. But, uh, you know, just a good, hardworking kid and 
uh, really loved UNCP, was really attracted to us. Uh, what we look at a lot too, Todd, is uh, just the fit. You know, guys that are really attracted to UNC Pembroke, understanding our, our product, understanding how we do things, and guys that can be gravitated towards that uh, are very attracted to us, and it ends up being a very good fit. And so he falls into that category. Okay. And, uh Osa won't even attempt to, to yep. say his last name. Yeah. Yeah. Osa Idahan. Uh, he he is a kid who is very raw and he's had very limited football in high school. He started playing football extremely late, uh, but just a, a very good athlete and has a lot of tools. Uh, we're really looking forward to just getting him in the program and developing him, and, uh, but just great potential. And we feel like he's going to be a guy. We don't necessarily need him to play uh, early in his career at defensive end, and so that's why we wanted to really take a, a body and a frame like his and be able to get it in the program and be able to de develop it. Let's talk about the other side of the trench. Uh, you got uh, four offensive linemen on here. Uh, looks like from the highlights, uh, not only – uh, size, but they have some agility as well to bring to your team. Yeah, the the O lineman I think from this year uh, is one of the better O line classes, honestly, that we've probably had in the past couple of years. Uh, you know, starting out with uh, Daryl Keith Quick, and uh, he is a very long, good tackle body, which is very difficult to get at our level, and. Uh, with him being as athletic as he is, he actually played a little bit of tight end in high school, a little defensive end, you know, so a very good athlete, but yet on film, very uh, aggressive, very physical, finishes guys when he's blocking, and so uh, he had some very attractive qualities. Uh, Jalen Williams uh, out of Dudley High School uh, comes from a great program, a lot of pedigree there. Uh, just a, a very good, well-rounded offensive lineman, and will have an opportunity to probably compete early in his career. And um, you know, we're expecting very big things out of him. And then uh, you've got uh, Ethan Ryan, who's a guy that uh, played offensive line, moved from tight end. Uh, you know, has has the ability to kind of do both, but we project him as an offensive lineman. Really see his body and development as a great asset for us. Don't need him to play early on, but he's got the intangibles, the EACD, to be able to really, uh, you know, work into something. Uh, when I refer to EACD, it's effort, attitude, coachable, dependable, and that's a big-time staple in our program. Uh, that allows him to improve and get better, and we think he's got a, a big upside there. And then Casey on Williams. Uh, kid from Kinston. Uh, he is uh, aggressive. He's kind of a mixture of everything. He could probably play uh, inside or potentially on the edge for us. And, uh, you know, just a, a good hard-nosed kid that we feel really, really good about that I think uh, will give us a lot uh, of options in terms of getting into the O-line uh, depth chart. Um, let's talk about some of the skill positions now. Uh, obviously a long line of, of wide receivers that we've had come through this program mm -hmm. Excelled and, and carried the team a little bit uh, to, to wins, uh, but talk about that the, the lone wide receiver in this class, Paulvin Horton. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what he brings to your to your offense. Yeah, Paulvin, uh, he was the, the first guy to commit in the class. Uh, you know, that's always kind of memorable and exciting because it you know it, it's kind of like it gets the ball rolling with the first guy that is really in the boat. And um, I can't speak enough to just his character and and his personality he's, he's a great kid a fun kid to be around but I think his athletic tools are going to be really exciting on the field very tall very long uh, can jump very athletic in terms of just the kind of raw qualities that he has as an athlete and so uh, to be able to have a bigger presence on the outside in terms of our receiving core he will bring that and I think he's able to just go up and get the ball and have a great presence there to catch the ball for us. Sort of same sort of tradition uh, with this team is the defensive backs, uh, and you did sign one there as well with Jordan Brown. Mm -hmm. Jordan Brown, JB, uh, was kind of a little bit later in the process, and you know we were really waiting for him and hoping he was gonna you know say yes to UNCP. And um, very physical defensive back is a guy that. Uh, we our DB's coach. He had him in camp. Really liked him over the summer, and we've been able to track him. And 
Um, you know, he just showed a lot of physicality on film and also think he can run and cover and do the things that we need him to do there. But uh, I think he brings a little different mentality on the football field than a lot of others uh, that play that position. And uh, I think he's going to just bring a very good, aggressive, physical mentality that, that our DB room will need. And you do have a, a, a pretty good one coming back to this position with quarterback with Josh Jones coming back. Yeah. Pretty solid foundation there, but you're able to – to go out and find a guy with pretty good numbers. Yeah, well. Colin Johnson. Uh, we have been on him for a very long time. Uh, led his team, Lee County, to great season this year. And uh, they lost one game, made it to the state championship, and, uh, you know, couldn't be more excited about his opportunity to get in the program. Uh, you know, like you said, Josh Jones, I mean, he's got two years left, and we need a guy to be able to get in the program and to start developing and uh, hopefully be able to learn from Josh and be able to see how Josh does it. And But I think Colin brings a great skill set of his own, and I'm really excited for his opportunity when he gets that and uh, couldn't be more excited about him with just his academic uh, side of things as a very bright and intelligent kid and comes from a great family and uh, we're excited to get him at that position and then running out the class the linebackers uh, uh, well uh, Jaden Richardson and uh, Benari Black talk about them you're a linebackers guy you coach linebackers for most of your career what do you see in them and, and what tools are they bringing to your defense that can help them move forward Jaden Richardson long athletic can run uh, played safety in high school a lot. Uh, also played more of an outside linebacker, which is kind of where we're going to start him. Uh, but just a great kid, comes from a great family. Uh, both parents played uh, college sports. Uh, dad was a football player. Mom was a lacrosse player in college and um, just understands it, you know, really has been raised the right way. And, um, you know, we're really excited to get him because uh, he's from Virginia. You know, we've been able to kind of go up there and be able to pull some really good guys out of there the last couple years and uh, really excited to just see his development he's going to need to fill out a little bit he's got a great frame to work with but uh, just excited to get him in the program Benari Black from uh, West Charlotte you know he's going to be a guy that uh, is very athletic played a high level of football in uh, the city of Charlotte and uh, I think he brings uh, just some pure athleticism and uh, just with his ability to kind of see the ball and to run it down and to do what he did on film we're really excited to get him in the mix as well and let's talk about and I know I ask you this every year what now that the recruiting season is quote finished uh, what what do you as far from a recruiting uh, aspect goes how much time do you take off if you take any uh, what are sort of the next steps as to look forward to signing day in 2021 yeah, I think uh, with the way that recruiting is going, uh, you've got to stay fresh because it gets really intense in certain moments, uh, and yet you've got to stay up on you know, who, who are the guys kind of going into the next year. And so uh, I think Division Two recruiting has uh, been able to do it right. Uh, you know, we're not under the same uh, calendar that uh, necessarily the bigger schools are under. But, um, you know, the coaches will certainly take a couple of days here to uh, re-recruit our families. And uh, so recruiting doesn't really stop for us. But, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's something that we love. Uh, we be, we're able to spend time with these guys, visit them in their homes, spend time with their families so we really know what we're getting. And they know what they're getting into also. And so it really, the process on the front end really works itself out to where it ends up being very smooth on the back end. So we really enjoy it. Uh, but we'll go into spring ball here. Year, and uh, now we'll go back and work with our players, which is really fun because these are players that obviously are in the program and we've had relationships with that have also been through this process, but now are further down the line to where now we're working with them to try to you know get them on the field and perform better. And uh, we're actually really excited to just kind of reacquaint ourselves with our team and get back and working with them in our skill development sessions and in the weight room and out there and conditioning drills and things like that. So we'll look forward to spring ball here. Uh, we're excited for a, a 2020 uh, year here where a lot of things are actually changing and really exciting for us. Uh, obviously starting the new conference coming up this year. Uh, there's just a lot of energy and a lot of excitement that's going on at UNCP football right now. And um, sometimes, you know, this was kind of a message in recruiting, but a lot of times people outside the walls of our locker room, of our team room, they don't understand it as much and, unless you're kind of on the inside. And the guys that are on the inside right now really can feel that. And there's a great energy that's going on. 
in, in what you just said led me to another question. I'm, it, obviously, it came into play last year, but what what kind of advantage is it, is it for you now rather than the first 12 years of the program? Uh, what kind of advantage is it for you now to go out and say, hey, we can win conference titles now. We're no longer playing as an independent. How attractive do you think that now is to – the kids are recruiting down to where it, the kids in the past you couldn't actually say. That. Yeah, absolutely. I think now you talk about the discussion of competing for a conference championship, uh, competing for postseason awards, just having an identity. Uh, you know, and I think uh, that's that's not anything that we could have said in the past. And uh, I think it, it, it's very good because those teams that we're going to be playing, we've had a history with them. Uh, we've been able to play them. We've been able to play them well. And uh, I think, you know, there's a lot to look forward to. It's going to be a good brand of football. And, um, you know, we really respect just kind of what the Mountain East has done here uh, as of lately. And uh, we're just excited to join it and to see what we can do there.